and most appropriately, a salute to rock and roll. Obviously, we still like it after all these years. This sound can be traced to one surfer who inspired legions of teens to claim surf for their own. Though some would surpass him in popularity, he would always be known as Dick Dale, king of the surf guitar. A lot of people say, how did you get that sound and, and what made you do that sound? It was actually all the way back from the beginning of time when I was listening to my, my mom and dad's big uh, 78, uh, whatever they call them, the records, listening to like guys like Carrie James, and I was listening to Gene Krupa and drums. After I um, finally understood what Gene Krupa was trying to do with sound, I knew what I wanted, but I also at the same time was surfing. And uh, I also at the same time had lions and tigers. When I would play on my guitar, I would get the sound like my African lions when they would turn around and roar at 5.30 in the evening, and their roar matched the roar of the wave, like... That's a roar. That's a real roar. And then when the wave is coming over the top of my head, and I'm coming through a tube and I stick my finger into the wall of the wave and my ear is right up against the water and you can just hear it and the, and the lace is coming over my head it would go you can just it's coming over the top of you Who's my baby moving on down the line I was there but when I got to Jerry, Jerry Lee and Mike Stowe they went to the Kell drums dum dum da 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 I said, oh, my God, what do I do with this thing here? Oh, oh. They were just, uh, Hang out here for the rest of the afternoon and let that play for the rest of the day. Here to accept our executive producer for WGBH, Elizabeth Dean, and the series producer for the BBC, Hugh Thompson. A lot of the people that I'd like to thank are in the room today. Uh, senior producer David Esbar and the Boston team of producers. Vicki Bippart and Dan McCabe, who made these pieces you just saw, Yvonne Smith, staffer Carol Osterer, Kathleen O'Connell. All of us say thanks to PBS for supporting the series, to the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, to WGBH, especially Peter McGee, and to the Peabody Awards. Thanks. Here's Hugh. There's a um, famous and probably apocryphal story about the origins of the phrase, it's only rock and roll. Many years ago, the great Iggy Pop was traveling to his next concert. Um, he was in a truck together with his roadies and the rest of his bands, and they were, how can I put this all a bit, overexcited. Anyway, they were driving along and they came to a tunnel. Now, the truck they were in had a 12-foot clearance, but they were late, they didn't check, they accelerated towards the tunnel, and this sign flashed past them. The sign said, 10-foot clearance only. Oh, well, said Iggy, settling back into his seat. After all, it's only rock and roll. <laughs> it's only rock and roll, but it's had a long and wonderful history. And we spent maybe three years trying to cover that history. Um, we've enjoyed doing it, and I'd like to thank um, all the filmmakers on both sides of the Atlantic, British and American, who helped make this transatlantic partnership work. I think together we made it through the tunnel. Thank you. <laughs>